Hey, when you take a loss, lights a fire under your ass. So I've been, I've been working, uh, making the right choices to put myself in this position right here, to put myself in a title eliminator fight and to get that title shot. Definitely. I mean, do you, I know you said like, you know, after wars, you like to take time off and things like that, but the title fight wasn't necessarily that. Um, so like, do you see the, the upside to this though? And like taking a long break and resetting a little bit? Yeah, I mean, so I fight twice a year. I fought Tony in May and Khabib in, Khabib in October. You know, that's two fights in a five, six month time span. So I'm still going to, on average, fight, you know, twice a year when it comes to, to my career. This, um, there was a little bit, you know, um, unclear path um, to what we were trying to do. You know, with Khabib retiring, Poirier taking the... <laughs> <laughs> Poirier taking the you know the, title, uh, the shot against McGregor for the money, which I have, don't blame him at all. So yeah, just um, he kind of threw things into a, to a little bit of a crazy, crazy little awkward thing. So yeah, here I am. Yeah, and to come back for this, I mean, a fight that a lot of people are looking forward to with Chandler. But in addition to having your two teammates fighting on the same card for titles. Um, what is just the preparation, like the mentality as a whole, being like going into this event? It's been great, man. Um, you know, Rose works out, then Kamaro, then me, and we all get to, you know, take a little bit from each other because we show up early, watch some of that workout. Yeah, it's been great, man. Having two world class athletes like those two, to uh, you know, their work ethic, their work ethic is second to none. They have very different styles, diff different work ethics, but they're so unique in the way that they work. So it's cool to see, you know, cool to uh, to just take what I can from that, from those experiences. And I'm sure you've got this question already, but like, is there any pressure to set the tone or anything? Or do you think just you being who you are, that's something that happens automatically? Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's similar to wrestling my whole life. You know, a dual tournament, a dual match, you go out there and your job is to win, but um, almost just as important is to inspire the rest of your team to perform. And that is, um, yeah, I'm embracing that. That's something that takes me back to my roots. Um, have you seen Colby around? I know you've said he's like one of the most despicable people in the world. Uh, mm -hmm. Only pedophiles and murderers <laughs> are uh, worse than I don't than know him. if that was my quote, but that's a good one. <laughs> I think it was. Uh, but uh, any beef with him? I mean, obviously, you're just rooting for your guy. I, uh, I'm here to get a paycheck, and I'm not here to take a paycheck out of Kamaru's bank account. You know, I don't want to fight him. So, Yeah. No, I have a job. It's Michael Chandler. It's the only guy I get paid to fight this week, so that's the only guy I'll be fighting. And uh, what do you think this kind of does for you in the division? I know you said on Betted that it's guaranteed title shot. Is that something someone at the UFC has told you, or is that just your belief? No, that's my belief. Yeah, I'm number two. Um, yeah, who else? There's absolutely nobody else. So, yeah, if not, we riot. Who do you expect to face, Poirier or Oliveira? I hope Poirier, because I want to exact my revenge. You know, that's one of the most um, human traits, is wanting to exact revenge on somebody that has beaten you, especially in this sport. There's not many times you get that opportunity. So, yeah, that would be a great, great chance. But, you know, Oliver brings such a crazy style to the cage. I think, um, for me, that would be a great matchup. And obviously, you know, you had the loss to Eddie and to B, but it seems like that Poirier fight really has kind of a special place because it seemed like the turning point that allowed you to become that guy who went on that run for the interim title. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's, it's the only path I have to revenge, you know. He's beat Poirier, or he's beat uh, Alvarez, so with that, I can get both those fights back. I will never get the Habib back, uh, fight back, and I'm okay with that. He's gone. Justin, earlier Michael was out here and he was paying you respect. He said he really enjoyed you. He thinks you're one of the most fun guys to watch in the sport, but you haven't exactly been secret that he kind of gets on your nerves. I'm curious, has that sort of faded as you got close to the fight or gone high? Yeah, that was just in that one interview, you know, just, yeah. I haven't, I don't know the guy that well. You know, I, I like the way he fights. Uh, there's not a lot of bad things that I could say, you know. At the end of the day, he's trying to take everything from me. He's trying to take the money off my table. He's trying to take the opportunity off my table. He's trying to take my title shot. So yeah, I don't like him because of that. That is the that is the only way that it's personal. I feel like when people look at this fight, they kind of expect it almost to be like turning on a blender and just having chaos for a little bit and then one of you walking out the winner. Is there a chance in your mind that it doesn't look like that? Yeah, I think so. I think, um, yeah, I mean, these guys watch Habib. They saw him take me down. You know, many guys have tried to take me down in my career. He was the one that was successful, so maybe they see a path to victory there. I do think uh, he's a smart guy, and I do think that he thinks 
he would be smart to try to turn this into a wrestling match for the first round or two. And so, yeah, that would, uh, if he was successful there, which he will not be, then it could suck, but not going to happen. He, uh, he said earlier that, you know, your leg kicks are obviously amazing, but he said your punches aren't that special. But obviously in your last few fights, your punches have been pretty special. You put a lot of guys away. Uh, are you surprised he has that attitude? Yeah. I have 22 fights, 19 knockouts. 22 wins, 19 knockouts. I've knocked him out with my hands and my legs. Um, so, yeah, whatever. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, I knocked up. Uh, no one had ever finished Barboza. I put him out cold. Um, same with a few other guys. So I don't know how, uh, where that would come from. You mentioned the wrestling there. Um, I'll be curious what you made of Islam's performance the other day. Yeah, it was impressive. Um, you know, it sucks for Dan. You know, he, uh, late replacement, you know. He wasn't a guy coming off a full camp preparing for Islam. That's what that was. And following that, what did you make of Daniel Cormier's performance in the post-fight interview? It's incredibly biased. Yeah. Do you think that's going to be a problem coming up with these uh, the guys? As fighters retire and become commentators, they still have teammates in the sports. They're going to kind of find it harder and harder to put aside that bias. At the end of the day, I love Cormier. I don't, you know, I felt it was my job that night to tweet and call it out because that's what I saw. Outside that, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Um, I think he knows that he should be in a, an unbiased mindset when he's doing this and that probably, you know, I would hope that that's uh, important to him. Thank you. Justin, to your left over here. Uh, would you say that you've significantly improved your wrestling since the Habib fight? I would say, I mean, I'm a wrestler. I've wrestled my whole life. You know, you guys watched that fight, and it, he got me down twice. It looked easy. I stopped a lot of his takedowns. Um, not a lot of people have stopped any of his takedowns, and I stopped, you know, for the whole first round, for the first four minutes and 20, 30 seconds, and I was able to keep him off of me. <clears throat> I've certainly embraced it more, you know. I've gone back, and I've worked a lot more since that day. I've done a lot more grappling, that's for sure, mostly for the cardio. Um, it's a different cardio, and yeah, I need to be confident in my ability to to wrestle and then stand up and fight. In terms of exciting matchups, where would you say that Chandler ranks among all the you know fellow exciting guys you've fought? I, I'd say it's one of the most exciting. I don't think anybody has, you know, no one's as explosive. He comes balls to the wall for the first round. Not many fights has he not done that, and so that's what I'm expecting. You know, that's what I'm hoping for. Um, you know, he doesn't want to sit back and let me fight at the pace Tony Ferguson let me fight at because I can do that all night. So, yeah, he's going to have to make it a, a firefight, try to get me tired. One of us is going to get tired. Most of these fights, you guys have watched this for a long time. It's come down to who uh, who's quitting, who's got more will to, to, to go on and continue. And that, I can see that becoming a factor on Saturday night. And in regards to those wars that you've had, is there one that stands out to you as the most fun that you've had in there? The most fun. I mean, I was the most terrified of Edson. You know, um, growing up, when I was in college, you know, wrestling, before I ever thought I'd fight in the UFC, I was watching this dude spinning back kick and take people to the shadow realm. Um, I remember playing poker with my guys. I fought in World Series, and he fought somebody, and I think it was when he fought Benil Dariush. I was, uh, we were watching it, playing, and um, I told all the guys, like, I'm going to fight that guy one day, and everyone was like, you're crazy. I was like, no, I'm going to fight him. And then, uh, yeah. I lined up, we got lined up against Edson. I was like, oh, shit, <laughs> what the fuck am I doing? And then, yeah, to go out there and knock him out. And, uh, you know, I was a better leg kicker than him. You know, my distance management was better. And, yeah, I was able to land that shot and put him out. And that was, that was a fun night for me. Best of luck, Justin. Thank you. That's right. Uh, it's, no, it's no secret that Kamar used to train at Sanford with Michael Chandler. He was, Michael was in here. He said there's no, the, the, he's still very friendly with Kamar. He considers him a friend. He just happens to be your teammate now. But yeah. did you have to have a conversation with Kamar about like, hey, I'm not looking for any like secret sauce that Michael Chandler may bring? No, there's, there's no such thing as secret sauce. You got to be perfect for, fifth, this one's 15 minutes. Judy is 25. Um, the only thing we talked about when it comes to fighting is the fact that I've had about twice as many five-round fights scheduled as Kamaro so far. So, yeah, you know, I'd be a fool to try to take, um, I don't even know what the hell you'd call it, like take advice from him to, uh, to expect things that are going to happen. You know, it's so fast. You're dealing with less than seconds and less than, less than centimeters. So none of that matters. I have to be perfect, be my best, be my best self. And if he could beat that, then more props to him.
Hey, Justin, right here. Um, you know, so I think you've made it very clear you were waiting for the right opportunity, and even if you'd wanted to stay active. But I was wondering, just you know, you're you're pretty hot right now. You've been one of the top lightweights. Is there anywhere you're like, you know, I didn't fight for a year. This is a year of my athletic prime and all that in, you know, the fight game. Was there any just like worry about that? Because that's a long time to be off at a time when you're at the top of the game. Yeah, no, not necessarily. Um, there were things that needed to be corrected, and I needed time to do that. So, you know, again, a, a loss like that will light a fire under any competitor's ass. And that's what it did for me. I went there and I started to work. So I think I needed it. Um, <clears throat> hired a nutritionist, a chef. There's a lot of things I've done different. Um, yeah, the older I get, the less uh, less forgiving some things are. So yeah, I got to take the time, take care of the body. And again, I fought two times in a five month period. So you know, I had this this break was somewhat natural. You, Benil Dariush, Islam all managed by the same guy, all of you guys in the same weight class and doing very well. What can you tell me about how Ali does approach you guys about sorting all that out? Because obviously you got to do your thing, but, you know, there's almost like a conflict a bit. Yeah, I've never talked to him about it. Never brought it up. Never brought it, never had it brought up to me. Um, yeah, there's, he has, a, he works for me and he works for them, but they're different businesses. So yeah, he needs to run each one accordingly. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. If I, if I would have seen him being like, yeah, DC, I, I agree, then yeah, I would probably have been pretty fucking pissed off. But, you know, he knows that that wouldn't be the professional thing to do. He's a, he's a great manager. He's a professional. Um, and loyalty runs a long ways. And, um, you know, I've probably been with him the longest. So we'll see. We'll see how this goes. I'm number two. He's number Benil's number three. I love that dude. Islam's number five. Like that dude. Hey, you hey, know he wins. He get a title shot. Who? You win. Oh, I know that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or we riot. Or we riot, and he's right next to me rioting. So <laughs> it is what it is. I, I trust that. I trust that if I was to get snubbed this time, that he would go to war with me, like we need to. Hundred percent. Nice jacket. Thank you. The Justin over here on your right. So you had a few okay, so after the yep. over here. after the Poirier loss, which was only the second loss. Obviously, he's not good as well. Uh, you changed a, quite a bit defensively in how you seemed to approach fights. So it was a lot more educated in terms of not just walking through the strikes to land your own, but to evade and to obviously still hit the uh, opponent. Can you talk more about some of the changes you made after that fight to where you are now? Yeah, I think <clears throat> both of the law to Eddie Alvarez and to Dustin Poirier, there were very similar instances in which I lost. Um, and they were exactly what you explained, my mindset. My mindset was, let's see who could take more, you know. And once I, once I took those shots and understood that you cannot let these guys that are, that are this good hit you, you know, at certain times, then, you know, defense becomes more of a, more of a tactic. Um, so, yeah, it's something that coach was trying to instill. And honestly, with the footwork that we have worked since day one, I was always able to do that, but my mindset did not allow me to. And so, yeah, now with, with that, with experience, you know, you make better choices. So I think I'm just making better choices. Hey, Justin, you keep saying it lit a fire under you uh, after the loss to Khabib. Do you, do you ever think about, you know, the months after, will he retire or come back, or was he just retiring in the ring and then he'll, he'll come back? Do you ever think about if he did, you know, would you want that rematch? Does it weigh a lot on your mind, the, that loss to Khabib? And do you think a win here would put that behind you for good? I mean, those are that's, that's a lot of ifs. He did retire, so, yeah, the ability to move on is, is much easier. If he was still here, would I want to fight him? Still, absolutely. But that's just not the case. And this is the most important fight in my career right now. With this, I get a title shot to fight for to be the number one dude in the world at 155. And that's all that matters. Okay. And Eddie Alvarez predicted that you will knock out Chandler in this. How, what's your prediction for the fight? I don't know. Someone's getting 50,000. I don't know if both of us or one of us, but someone will. <laughs> Justin, over here on your right. So we've heard you say a lot this week that you're going to get a title shot if you win this fight. And even Michael Chandler said he had his doubts about that. He didn't know if 
the UFC told you that specifically or if you assumed that in your own head. Has the UFC given you any indication that you'll get a title shot or your manager, Ali? If he's talking about himself, then I could see that. I mean, even if he wins, they probably won't give him a title shot. I could see that, but, you know, that's just because it was perfect. The only reason he got the first one was perfect timing. Perfect timing. Um, but, yeah. I don't know. I think I already said it. If I don't get the shot, I'm not, we riot. You know, we go to war. That's what. That's. I have to be biased when it comes to this, and you know, I'm not going to be around here for much longer. So if I was to get snubbed again, yeah, I have to do something about it, whether that's cause a ruckus. But I'll just let my manager do his job. You know, I got the best manager in the game, so he knows. We all know what's supposed to happen if I get this win on Saturday night, and so hopefully you all ride with me. All right. Thanks, Justin.